So one of the things that we absolutely love about stepping into the Delmarva Life kitchen is getting to know the fabulous chefs who are proud to call Delmarva home. Oh yeah, and today we're hanging out with one of those chefs who has never been in the Delmarva Life kitchen to cook with us. This is Chef Denise Clemens, who is the author of Culinary History of Southern Delaware. Thank Woo. you for coming on the show today. Glad you're here. And we are actually making mock shoe, which is not fake footwear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Okay. okay, but we're also making crab cake sliders. Yes. Okay, so is this in your cookbook? Um, the, the crab cakes are, uh, the mock shoe is not, but it's kind of a variation on corn chowder, so it's sort of there. Okay, all right, well let's get started. Jimmy's getting his gloves on, so yeah, he's ready to go. Yeah, what are we doing here? What okay, we... what I'd like you to do is to dice the red pepper. Okay. I'd suggest sliding, slicing it lengthwise and then chopping it. Big, teeny, yeah, large, well, huge. Whatever you need. Okay. And then if you would do nice. the same with the shallots. And you want them diced? Yes. Okay. All However right. you like. I've got some butter here okay. already melting. Real butter. Real butter. Unsalted butter is always a better choice if you're cooking. Why? Because you have control over how much salt goes in the oh, dish. Oh, okay. Um, it's especially true in baking because you always have that pinch of salt in the recipe. You want to make sure you're um, not giving it you're, too that much. That your pinch isn't already in there? Right. Ah. I never <laughs> thought about that, but that makes absolute sense. Okay. And I'm going to reach over you and grab... Um, Typically, uh, mock shoe is made with corn, green bell peppers, which are actually unripe red, yellow, or orange bell peppers. Mm -hmm. So we're going to stick with red. I'm going to use sun-dried tomatoes. Since the focus of my book is really what is in season and fresh and part of the culinary tradition as well as the agricultural tradition of the area. Ah. So corn isn't in season, tomatoes aren't in season, so we're going to improvise just a little. Well, what okay. got you into this as a topic? Uh, it's kind of an interesting thing. I've been writing a food or cooking column for the past 12 years yeah. for the Cape Gazette focused on fresh, easy to make um, foods for the home cook. And I was approached by the publisher, Arcadia History Press, mm -hmm. and they said, could you write a history of Lewis? And obviously they didn't realize that three or four people had already done that. Oh. So I said, what are you about cooking? And she said, well, we have a, an American palette series. How about you do the culinary history of Delaware? And then we negotiated and we got the Delaware down to Southern, southern Delaware. Delaware. <laughs> and, and there you go. Well, because it's different. I right. mean, Northern Delaware is urban, Wilmington, think about it, versus Southern Delaware, which is much more agricultural. Makes and, sense. and it was uh, great fun. I got to talk to a lot of people who are um, farmers, uh -huh. and actually the scaffolding of the book is a family. You may have heard of Bennett's Peaches. Uh -huh. oh, yes. They've been here since the 1700s when one of their ancestors shipwrecked up over on Cotton Patch in the oh Indian River Inlet. And they've been in the agricultural world since then, doing everything from mining salt uh, to grist mills, sawmills, peaches, strawberries, broiler that? chickens. Um, so they were wonderful. They shared a lot of family recipes oh with my me. My goodness. And if you're, All right, do you want now, to scrape that in? I'm okay. not done as well as, as you would like. Or as They're you perfect. Do, so. perfect. Okay. All right. The so best we're... is the enemy of the good. The best the is best. the enemy of the good. I've never heard that. I like okay. that. Okay. All right. And ready for this one? Yep. Ready right. for that one? one? It's not nearly as pretty as it's Lisa's. It's gorgeous. It's it is gorgeous. It's a beautiful red color. It is. Now, some of you may be thinking fresh, organic. Why are we doing with, oh, could you press those garlic cloves? Oh, garlic coming in. Do you in. know how to do that? Well, hopefully, Let's how see. you press garlic is pretty simple. Right, right. You and then hold it over here. Does pretty much what it sounds like. Yeah, and then push. Okay. And then use your knife to scrape, hmm, to scrape off what's there. Just like that? Just Perfect. As I go? Yep, great. Just like that? Yep. Done. Wonderful, great. Another one? Um, Come yeah, on, I got I this down well. pat yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, now that you're a pro, we'll okay, go ahead and right. do it. Um, so, frozen vegetables are the next thing to fresh. That's, that's, yeah. Because canned, you get heat treatment, which kind of cooks them, and then you sometimes get that less than pleasant taste. Mm -hmm. So, you'll fi find that most fresh vegetables are pretty darn close to what you get off the vine or the ear or the mm -hmm. cob. So obviously our corn is not in season, so we have frozen yes, corn? Yes, yes. And I'm just softening these vegetables just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna throw in some black pepper. You can just leave that there. Um, a little bit of salt. I was playing with it. I prefer, <laughs> oh, well you're doing so well. See? Um, kosher salt, remember kosher salt doesn't have iodine, so if that's an issue you need to go with table salt. A little bit of cayenne, this has got some heat to it. Oh, mm. yes. I'm and glad you then, didn't put that you on Jimmy's side. You want some more of that, it's okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. We, we, well, you can put the container over there with you. Okay, good. Yeah. Perfect. I love the way gonna, you do things. And then we're going to pop in the corn, and we're just going to 
cook this just a little bit. Right. Hanover, by the way, Hanover and Pick Sweet are Southern Delaware brands. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you if you see them in the um, supermarket. A little Delmarva or Southern Delaware history well, there. Well, Delmarva, Southern Delaware. Delmar, it's, yeah. um, I had to make it a boundary for the book, but there's a lot that Southern Delaware shares with the rest of Delmarva, yeah. including waterways and um, of course. traditions. All right, and then the secret ingredient, heavy cream. Heavy cream. Which is, as he pointed out, the low calorie heavy cream. Uh, and it's from Lewis Dairy, I so we've more, yeah. more Southern Lewis Delaware there. Yeah, Lewis Dairy. Lewis Dairy's been around. They started out delivering milk. Um, to people's houses in the back of their station wagon. And oh, really? They were one of the few that um, early ones that went with glass bottles, um, and they had to stop doing their job during the Second World War because all the men had to go serve their country. Oh, that's interesting. But they came back, and they still have a Lewis Dairy label, even though um, must, much of the milk is now manufactured or processed up in Wilmington. Okay. You know so much. <laughs> I love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so do we let this cook a little bit? Um, this is pretty much, I'm going to let it simmer down. There's mm -hmm. other recipes for mock shu, uh, which tell you to use a can of regular corn and a can of creamed corn. Don't ever do that. No. It's mm -hmm. just not nice. Not, oh. um, it's, it tastes like canned corn. Oh. This is going to have a lot of layers of flavor. We might need a tiny bit more salt. We'll taste it before we go. Okay. If you well, want to sprinkle that in. I tell you what, this is not the only part of our meal today. As we mentioned before, we are also putting together some crab cake sliders. The whole crew, and I mean this whole crew, the whole crew is the going to love. Stay with us. Some Marvel Life will be right back. That looks awesome. Mm -hmm.